What do you want me to show you first? You want me to show yeah, you this? Let's see what this is. Let's see what this is about. Let's see this, this thing right here, right? This is the exact setup for a tattooer in 1955 Coney Island, Brooklyn. This machine right here is good to go. I can tattoo in this right now. People talk about a traditional tattoo. You should be able to see it from across the street and know what it is. And I, I can't think of a more perfect example of that than a Burt Crack tattoo. The thing with Burt Crack and what he's got going there, now people are realizing the importance of that imagery. It's American. It's where they came from. There's not many people that think about tattooing as much as Burt. He has definitely thrown his life at it. This is as rare as it gets. It just blows my mind that I even have this stuff, you know? His family, obviously, first and foremost, but tattooing is right up there. <laughs> He's a bigger than life character, you know? You don't, you don't have to watch me shave you. Oh. That just makes it weird, you know what I mean? <laughs> It'd be hard not to want to get tattooed by Burt Crack. If you want what I have to offer, well then let's do it. I think not every tattoo I have on my body has to be a mask like this, you know? Right. But I want some, so I'm coming kind of here. Hey, that's good. Time very focused on traditional tattooing. Not only does it look the best, but it ages the best. This looks the toughest, you know? There's certain designs I've probably tattooed 50, 100, 100 times. I don't care, I'll, I'll keep tattooing them from now until I don't do this anymore, you know? You'll notice it and you'll recognize it as being Burt Crack. It's gonna have a, a pretty good, solid, big, fat black outline, nice black shading, you know? Just the right amount of color. I think it's at first glance. It's like an instant reaction that it looks great. Regardless of the subject matter, but just the, the composition of them, the line weights, like everything is so on point. Well done, Marco. What do you think? It's nice and big, too. It fills the whole spot, right? Yeah. The sheer graphicness and power of his tattoos, I think it matches his personality. It's very direct. First tattoo. Pretty, yep. exci pretty exciting. So we're doing one tonight, and then in a couple of days, you're getting this one. Yeah, on Saturday. OK, yeah. cool. Sick. Well, you know what? Take your shirt off for me. Let me take a look at your chest. Maybe just a little smaller on this yeah. one, and, and then this size. Uh, this one's good size. I always try to steer people yeah. into a into a design that I th I think is going to look good as a tattoo, and, and that way we we could both be happy. I don't know if I, I looked correctly at the sheep, but I wanted it to be like a dead sheep essentially. Is there any way? I mean, or just I, make it more just. I would I'd just leave it the way it is, to right. be honest with you. Because uh, making it dead, in, in what way? Like, put, like put X's on, like, look, like look, oh, yeah, that's true, put yeah. X's on his eyes, you know what I mean? Like, that's... You're right, that's, you're right, you're right. You know? So, unless between today and Saturday, you find a good reference of a sheet that right. looks dead and it's still going to make a good tattoo, I'll draw it off of that, you know what I mean? I trust what you do. Yeah. Tell them tell what you warn your friends. Oh, he's going to be an asshole. No, that, that's not what she really means. Okay. Uh, that's okay. not actually what she okay. means. Usually the conversation goes, I want to get tattooed. OK, either they have an idea or ask him. And then? He's going to shut you down if it's a bad idea. He's going to tell you exactly what he doesn't like. It's never going to just be like, OK, whatever you want. <laughs> Here we go. What do you think? Not so bad, right? Full pain, full blood. You'll, you're, you're, you're gonna get used to it. Here, I'm gonna tell you this. Re regulate your breathing, just relax and breathe normal. Relax your feet, relax your toes, relax your fingertips, all right? Sounds good. You'll see, though, in a few minutes when the outline's done, you'll be totally used to it. Traditional tattooing has always gone, you know, ebbs and flows. What Bert figured out is that the simpler designs, that was the real good stuff. 
he was the first guy to say, this is what we're selling, and this is the premium tattoo, because this is the best that there is. I feel like in Bert's case, there's a level of craft and care and tradition. I think he wants to continue that tradition, but I think he wants to add a page to that history. Here, I, I have something pretty interesting I can show you guys. Here's just some sheets of flash that I painted. Painted, painted this as a reference for, for Burt Jr.'s first two tattoos. Who is Burt Jr.? My oldest son. He just asked me for mom and dad tattoos for his first ones. And, and uh, you know, this is just kind of what I, what I put together for him. Maybe one of the things about working in, in a style and being known for that is that you have to kind of innovate that. Something has to always be developed to keep it new and fresh, and he's never really struggled to do that. I had like a bunch of people talking to me about getting back pieces, so I had this idea like, I'm gonna paint every back piece I get asked to do. So I started doing that, and then I realized this is like a lot of work. But I did end up ha getting to paint a few of these back pieces. This is Nathaniel, you know, and this is Nat Boy's back piece. Well, he's been knocking all these really cool back pieces out. It's amazing. All the back pieces that came in down there, Ben Hish's back, the Rock of Ages, the clouds say Rock of Ages in it. Just like, who, who would think of that and then be confident enough to pull that off? This one, I finished this one. And he's got a back piece of a jaguar and a gorilla fighting on top of a pile of skulls. And it, it's one of the strongest tattoos you've ever seen. It's so mean looking, it's great. It's kind of wild. But they look, they could be best buds though, you know? <laughs> I think now I'm just really focusing on finding designs I haven't done before that haven't been overdone by all these other people that are doing the same style. I'm just always looking for like a design that, that, that you haven't seen yet. <laughs> Yeah, you guys know on Thursday night, Ma Max is having like a, a book opening party, right? Are you going? Yeah, so is Tara. I think the cover of the book says, what color are the lights on the Empire State Building tonight? Which is, hey, it's a great question. My, my favorite one though is the, is the, when they do the rainbow, when it's like Pride Week and they do the rainbow Empire State Building. That looks sick. I remember as a kid, I just always thought like New York is so cool. I just felt like this this is the capital of the world. Then I go look in the mirror. First time I came to New York City Tattoo Convention, the first one I did, I met Steve. You know, when you meet Bert, he's real nice. You know, he's he's got a way about him. So we hit it off pretty quick. But I think Bert also had a pretty good focus on what he wanted overall, what he thought looked good about tattoos and how he wanted them to look. Even when I was in Florida. I was looking at that New York book and not feeling like this this is this is the, this is the good stuff, you know. This book deals with um, the history of New York City tattooing. What I like about the New York style of tattooing is that I like how bold it is. I like how it reads really simply and 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 looks super strong, you know. I've read this book multiple times. I've asked my son to read this book. This is the book that really fires you up to be a part of this New York thing. Me and Eli and Bolts have talked about how when we were younger, we would read this book and feel like, cool, like, you know, we're, 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 we're gonna be a part of this. We would talk about like, maybe we should, you know, open a tattoo shop in Brooklyn, in, in Carroll Gardens. This was where Steve lived. You know, in the very beginning, it was right off the bat, me, Steve, Eli. Dan started the next year. We didn't really have to talk about what style the shop was gonna be because we were doing traditional stuff. But maybe in the first year of being here or second year of being here, we would always talk about Tony Polito. I learned about Tony from the New York City book. That was like our Bible. And there's those two sheets in the back of the book that we I always thought was like kind of the coolest sheet to flash ever. This is from Tony's first basement shop, these sheets. I traced every one of these designs. I painted every one of these designs. You know, I, I, I would use these sheets. They just have such a different look. 
He was a regional folk hero in New York City, maybe New Jersey, people knew him here. But he was a worldwide figure, and I think it's her, you know, love and admiration for him was really what made him a worldwide tattoo legend, you know? We knew he was only maybe like three miles, four or five miles away, and then just one day, we just went there. We went, we met Tony. I asked him if he had any old flash. He went in the basement and brought two originals upstairs and he gave me them. And when we left, we we're just like, wow. As soon as I got them, I thought, wow, I just got two of the best sheets ever painted. Did Tony or, or anybody you know, from that era even think for one second that any of these sheets were gonna be like collected one day? You know, it was a tool for, for them to, you know, this is like, this is our product. You know, you just pick the product, I, I give it to you, you know what I mean? I think when we got the Polito stuff, so when we were like, all right, this is, this is really what we should be doing. Like that's when the really the ball kind of like started really rolling, you know what I mean? And, and things I think started really like evolving. We put the flash up and they, they would get it. You know, you always knew if you, if you went to Tony's, you're getting a very classic Brooklyn style tattoo. And uh, I, I like people to think, think of our shop the same way. You see, what Bert Crack has at Smith Street Tattoo is a team. And they're all doing basically the same style. So they do it real good. People just kind of know what to expect coming through that door. And that's a bold, stripped down, simple, strong New York style tattoo. You know, I idolized it. I was watching what they were doing. And, and so to get to be a part of it, yeah, if I, ever since I you know, knew that it, traditional was for me and this place existed, I, I wanted to, to see it and to be here. It's a special thing they have. You don't find that everywhere. It's, it's more than just um, a coworker situation. It's, it's, a, it's another family for him. It really is. What are we having for lunch today? Something good. They get along, they go out, they have fun. My kids call them all uncles. They, they, they call them their tattoo uncles, <laughs> actually. You know, we built, we built this place. <laughs> I get so much enjoyment out of it. You know, this is like my clubhouse. Dad! <laughs> should, I, should I tell them to, to go downstairs and watch a movie? Let's go watch a movie. If you don't want us here, We'll be okay. Whatever. <laughs> All right, so you guys want to see some of these pictures? Yeah, this is a pretty old photo of me and Tyra. Probably like right around the when we first started dating, right? Yeah. I mean, when I met him, he was already out of school. He was already working full time. He was like 17, 18 uh, when I first met him. Look, this one says 95. Before Burt Jr. Tyra might even be pregnant in this photo. You guys had first about a year after you guys met? Yep, almost, yep. Exactly. almost exactly. Almost exactly. Well, not met, but dated. So Bert Jr. was less than a month old in this photo. Look, not a, not a tattoo on, on us. <laughs> 17, I started buying tattoo magazines. I would go get these magazines and I would just like, I'd read it front to back and I'd stare at them. And just a thing in my head said, I'm gonna do this. I mean, his mother, begged me, begged me to um, make him get a real job, I believe was the, the term at the time. And I just told her, yeah, he's a man. He wants to do it, he's gonna do it. Tara's so important to my tattoo because, you know, like even when I didn't know if I could do it, she was like, you, you can do this. I had Tara and Burt Jr. before I had tattoos. You know, so like anything that I've learned in tattooing, she, she watched me learn it. I think you were tattooing 10 years before you would even tattoo me. Because he's like, I gotta look at it every day. <laughs> yeah, but I make house calls for you. I've had a couple house calls, that is correct. And I've had shops opened when they're closed just for me too, to be fair. Yep. He's built a whole, you know, a whole life from, from nothing. Wix, what are you doing? Wanna go outside? Wait, wait, I can do this. They're real competitive. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> he's super dedicated family man. He's about that family life. He's very proud to be a dad, very proud to be a husband. They adore him. He's really, really a good dad. You know, he's really loving, and uh, it's it, it just shows in everything that he does. So, uh, you have a lot of flash in your living room. Mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's awesome. It's interesting to look at. It's old stuff you don't see, you know. But Bert pretty much does the, uh, the decorating here. <laughs> I, my, my thing is just when it's too over the top, no. <laughs> this is a sheet from old, old Calcutta. I got this from Tony, like, probably in the first maybe year that I met him. This is an Ed Smith sheet. This is an old Bowery tattooer. I'm pretty sure he was broken by uh, Charlie Wagner. This one's Paul Rogers. It's got all the all the history kind of like written on there. This is uh, Ralph Johnson. This is an unknown as, as well as this one here. His love for this, it, it, it goes so deep. It's not about tattooing every day. Got this from Ed on my first studio visit there. Ed who? Ed Hardy. And then um, this sheet here is from Cap Coleman. He soaks up the knowledge of years gone by, of, of the, you know, the history of tattooing. This is a Charlie Wagner sign. We've been told forever that all Wagner stuff, you know, ended up in the garbage. Like, he, you know, they closed his shop, he left or he passed away or whatever. The landlord goes in, takes all the stuff, throws it in the garbage. Um, I think Charlie Wagner is pretty much the most influential uh, Bowery tattooer of his time. All my like collector buddies, they can't believe that I, that I that I have it, that it exists. He doesn't get something cool and then hide it from anybody. These are Bob Wicks. These are the best. He's not gonna post it on Instagram or on the internet and show everybody what he has, but if you come by, he's gonna be like, check this out. 1933. These were found in an attic, I think, in Boston. I think even to today, he's respected as like, Probably the greatest artist or flash artist in, in tattooing. Look at the detail on that. That's insane. I think this is my the best piece of flash that I that I, that I own by by far. Ever since I got this stuff, I've been Googling Charlie Wagner, looking for these designs in the pictures, the sign. And every photo seems to have different stuff in it. So it's kind of like, I haven't found any of these in any photos yet. You kind of like get it, collect during like insanity sometimes, but lately I just tell myself, hey, you know what, you can't have it all and just be happy for the stuff that does fall in my lap. And I've been pretty fortunate that a lot of cool things have fall, you know, come my way. I'm gonna leave, okay? Right now? Yeah. Bye. Hold on, hold on, come up here, come up here. Get up here. You can't leave like that. Where's my, you're gonna give me a kiss? <laughs> there you go. Later, bud. Later. Mike Perfetto is um, actually the, the operator of the um, longest running tattoo shop in New York City. Yeah, I haven't, haven't been there in a long time. It's a pretty cool shop. He probably has one of the best neons you've ever seen in a tattoo shop. Profeto's shop's so classic. How you doing? You know, Mike's been tattooing in the same location since before I was born. I pretty much have told everybody that ever asks me about where should I get tattooed in New York? What, where else should I go see? I always say, you, you know, you, sh you should go see Mikey's place. Yeah, it looks, it looks good down here. It looks a little different because you took out, you took down all the, the, you put all Jerry stuff up. Yeah, a lot of hand painted stuff I took down. I put up Jerry stuff, try to, try to bring that back. Are people picking this stuff? Yes, they are. Actually, they are. And I think it's thanks to you. I think you put a new face on it, you personally. And I'm not just saying that because we're here together and you're twice my size. But, <laughs> <laughs> but in all honesty, I tell, I tell all of our friends, I said, man, Bert really, you know, put a new face on that. And that's what he does and that's what he sticks to. It. I, I admire these guys that, that kept and brought back that old style look. 
because that is what emulates the whole tattoo world, you know? It really does. That, that's what says tattoo. Would you mind showing us some of your older stuff? Like, you have any, any sheets or anything like that you can oh, show yeah, us? Yeah, let me see what I got. I mean, <clears throat> Maybe there's some. And stuff. I, I brought a little. I brought a little, a, like a very simple design to get tattooed. I mean, I know you got yeah, a, sure. appointments no coming problem. soon, but it might take ten minutes. Absolutely, sure. Are that these newer head. or are these older? No, those are older. These are amazing, Mike. Seems well, let me put it to you this way, Monica. I went out with when I was thirty-one. <laughs> yeah, so these are older. <laughs> I love these. Those two Christ sheets are amazing. You want to take them. one? Take one. Get out of here. Yeah, take whatever one you want. You serious? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take this one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike. You're welcome. To be able to like now be friends with Mike and spend time with him and get tattooed by him, it's, it, it's like uh, it's kind of, kind of a, an honor to be able to even tattoo in the same borough as him. I always said I think that Bert's shop is the most well-tuned working machine in the tattoo world. I always said that was the most perfect working machine. God's honest truth. <laughs> That's the God's honest truth. <laughs> I always said that. <laughs> You're setting the bar. <laughs> and there's absolutely no doubt that Bert here has made his mark in his tattoo world. Thanks, Mike. That's the God's honest truth. I appreciate it. <laughs> I always said that. I was thinking about, you should know, get the design over here. I was thinking about putting it pretty much right here. At this point, you got to be real selective. Yeah. Maybe like right there. <laughs> oh, cool. Nice. I think that fits pretty good. Yeah, excellent. Ed Hardy did this one. Cool. All right, ready? Oh, yeah. All right. I want to carry the torch of, of New York City tattooing. These guys have put in a lot of work to achieve this style and to, to be considered like the best shops in New York. I like people to think of our shop the same way. You know, we, we, these are the guys we're looking up to. These are the guys who we're trying to emulate. We're trying to put in, you know, the same hard work that they did to keep this style going.